And welcome back, everyone. We're now in round two of the first NA edition of Blitzkrieg Battle. Done several European tournaments. This is our first track at North America. And we are following ProCal, who we just watched win an overtime game on Liberation to get here against Exilium. And now they're going to be playing against Pure, or Pure 1, because now someone else has taken over the Pure name. So now, just like on Steam, where you have to put that, you know, one in parentheses next to your name, because it's just like someone else's, they've now done that too, to kind of poke a little bit of fun at the Stay Pure team that features Dizzy and Wilski. Well, this is the Pure team that has been winning almost everything in North America up until this point. I think there's one tournament they placed top four because they lost to the ITS team that has like Nicholas TJO and Synced and Wicked and all those guys, but they've won pretty much every other tournament they've played in. Definitely considered probably the best team in North America right now. Uh, I've actually rang for this team a couple of times in scrims for, against a couple of different teams. And I have a pretty good familiarity with them. Actually, did a three-hour-long podcast with Lex last week that you guys can go check out. But uh, definitely the team that is favored to win is going to be Pure One playing against the ProCal team we just watched. And uh, I'm Dust, of course. You can follow me on Twitter at Follow Dust. It's on screen. Also, we got our producer Mitch, who is helping out. He's what our up? producer. But he's going to do some casting as well to help me not just talk to myself for the whole game, which is nice. So, hello, Mitch. What is up, my dudes? Just here to help. And hopefully, Indeed, uh, well, we will have to tab out to change the graphics in a second. Uh, just waiting for them to decide which side they're going to be playing on. Fair enough. So we Again, I think you guys are in for a real treat. If you guys haven't watched Pure Play before, uh, definitely a solid team. Lex is going to be their primary scope. Uh, definitely a guy who can be very mobile, very good scope player, very accurate. Uh, definitely fun to watch play. Grego is their secondary scope and I think their primary caller. So he's the one kind of calling shots. He also plays default class a ton if he's not the secondary scope, but can play some other. He's like kind of their their uh, jack of all trades, I guess you could say, but likes to play default class for that utility. Uh, JC Stani and Spurks are two to be Fox Rocks and Spurks are the typical SMG players for this team. They like to be the aggressors and ones kind of open things up. And then JC Stani is kind of a flex. Like you'll see him use bolt action rifles like the Karnandi 8, uh, but also he can use heavy and he can also himself use SMGs alongside Fox Rocks and Spurks. Uh, so that's just kind of some stuff to look out for as we do go live in our first round. And we actually see a lot of bars over here on Pure One uh, for Fox Rocks and Spurts. No SMGs except for JC Stani. It's a little bit different look from them as far as who's using what guns. As you do see JC Stani clearing out the connector house, but does get traded out by Blade. Now it's all up to Lex with the scope, who has found one kill. Fox Rocks with one as well. This is a very quick round. Quickly goes into a two versus two situation. But Grego from the manor house able to tag one out in the middle. He's Red City all alone. What can they do here? I don't think either player has the bomb right now from the Pure One side. Red City trying to work his way towards Manor House to see if he can't sniff out Grego. Grego just watching the stairwell, playing patiently. Lex has picked up an MP40 that was dropped and will be able to come help out Grego here in a moment. And as Red City tries to come out, Grego taps him from the top of the stairwell. That was a really chaotic round, though, if we're honest. A lot of fast action towards middle. Yeah, that went down pretty fast, actually. Red was really stuck there. He had to make sure he didn't make any noise. Forced to go down towards the stairs. I think he did see the tip of the head on the top of stairs, but it's hard to notice that when you're playing the game. you got to focus on the center of the screen and every other angle, too. But we know where to look, yeah. of course. Yeah, of course, Lexa getting going for that mid-pick with the scope is going to be successful. In the meanwhile, JC Stani quickly gets in the connector house with his SMG. That's a very fast push. Gets a kill. This is looking like a pretty dominant round thus far from Pure One. As Again, Grego's kind of patrolling the top of Manor House. Here he can watch B rotations. He can also assist a little bit later on. As I think he might have spotted Red City towards spawn. Yeah, he does. He goes for the peak, but misses the frag. Goes down the Red City, but in the meantime, Fox Rocks was able to find himself another kill towards the A side of the map. And now JC Stani is catching that B rotation by Big Barn. And that's left Red City again all alone. This time with way more allies to fight against than just two. It's double that. Just working around the trenches here. JC Stani has spotted him out with his Thompson. Just waiting for him to peek so he can get the frag. And he does. And so that is another round going the way of Pure One here on the allied side of Manor V2. Which I think this map is one of the maps that... Allies have a little bit more success than maybe derail their liberation. I'm not 100% sure on that because most teams don't like it. So you don't see it play that much. 
but it does seem like this map I have seen allies do a little bit better than other maps. Here we are going to see Spurks kind of changing things up, pushing out long A. Red City will push to meet him, but Spurks will win that duel. Equal exchange, though, as Tom was able to get down JC Stani, but Blade has gotten the advantage for Procal. So now Pure will just sit back and see if any aggression will be coming out of Procal, which we do have Driz actually pushing through B. So Lex may be able to catch on to this as he has that scope over towards middle over towards the pure side of middle he does catch Trisky pushing b house that's a big kill because that gets them the advantage back was a four on three now a three on two in favor of pure so let's swap tom does get spotted in the connector house here by spurt spurt doing some damage with thompson doing his best to stay alive is tom with that shotgun but plasma's been taken out and they have a pretty good idea on where tom is and they will hunt him down there is lex with the pistol so it is now three zero in favor of pier one again we're seeing the allies coming out on top in the first few rounds anyways not something we expect to see manor has not a commonly played map though a lot of teams very uncomfortable on it we've seen again and again in the finals when teams actually have a choice that it's uh it's neglected a lot of the time. Yeah, it's very true. So it makes it hard to know too much about it. But again, I feel like it's not nearly as accent sided as like derailed uh, and, and even a liberation. I think this map has a little bit more flexibility for allies. Um, I think that there's definitely a lot of places an allied sniper can look for picks at middle or towards long A or towards the plane street. So there's definitely ways you can get picks. Um, so I, th I think there are a little bit more options than comparison to derailed. I think it's the, like the polar opposite that's like super access sided. But again, like you said, hard to know. Don't see it played a lot. Curious what chat thinks. Maybe they can pitch in their thoughts from what they've seen. I haven't watched many NA matches on this map, but I've definitely seen some European teams do pretty well on allied side. Trying to see pure, maybe crack open the egg that is the A bomb site here. It's an even four on four. Fox is going to go for the push with the SMG. Does get a kill quickly traded by Red City, but that does give pure an opening and some information. So that was a worthwhile pick. But Grego going down to Red City is the problem. Now they've lost their man advantage, and Red City's tagged down another member, forcing Spurks to fall back for a moment. And now Spurks is actually out of the fight. It's all on Lex. 1v3 with the scope. He knows one's in sight, but he also knows he's being flanked around by Driz, who has picked up a card. Lex with the pistol, able to get all of the bullets in, get the kill. It doesn't take any damage in the process, so it doesn't have to stall. It doesn't have to wait for a regen. can just keep going for the fight. He is running low on time. Oh, if he could have just pulled the trigger a little bit faster, maybe he gets himself the kill on time and into a 1v1, but it doesn't work out that way. Pro Cal, do great, great job of just stopping that A push. Very unfortunate when you see players like that getting caught with the sprint. He saw him but by the time that you stop sprinting and manage to actually aim, and especially with a sniper rifle, it's uh, it's not, it's less than ideal, anyways, to be caught with uh, with the sprint. So there's a bit of a cooldown. It's gonna be very frustrating to know that you had him, you caught him jumping across the open. He didn't know you were there, and he got the kill. Yeah, and there's Lex, another opening scope pick. He's consistently done this on Allied side. He might find another one. Driz was crossing to B. Tried to go for the shot on Lex, misses, doesn't repeat though, just decides to commit to going to the B-bomb site to watch the house, which means Lex won't be given any more opportunities to find a pick for now on this side of the map. In the meantime, we do see JC Stani and Grego pushing up middle, getting control of Connector House, now getting control of the A-barn as well. So they're getting a lot of map control up middle on the pure side. And this could really be a problem because these ProCon members are split two to each side of the map, so they could get cut off from one another big time. As long as Pure kind of pays attention and keeps their eyes peeled, they should be able to catch any type of flank, which Tom is certainly trying to go for right now. He is going to be looking to try to come around middle and get behind some of these Pure members. Grego has occasionally been glancing that direction, but now they will just go ahead and commit to the A push. And so far, a good trade for Pure. They trade two for one to get themselves in. They will go ahead and start that bomb plant. Fox Rock peeking the trenches here. Spots Triz with the scope towards Axis spawn. Doesn't get the kill, but gets the information, and JC's kind of actually push the gate and get into Axis spawn and be able to cut off Tom, perhaps. Or excuse me, Drizky, I should say. And there it is. Now it's all on Tom, and the trenches gets caught by Fox Rocks. 
And so it is now a 4-1 lead for Pure 1. So cards you have to assume are starting to run low on the Axis side at this point. We do see Red City and Drizky and Tom all on the wares at this point. Yes, that gives you some utility. You see Plasma trying to go for a scope pick down a long street. Doesn't get a shot, but Tom was able to manage to push out over towards alt mid and get himself a kill. So oh, Grego out of the fight. Advantage here for ProCal. Meanwhile, though, Pure is getting control of middle. They're controlling Connector House and A-Barn yet again. Very great positions to be able to control as allies. And now they're starting to get some good frags into the a site as well. Procal, the cards are falling. But there's now a two-on-two, -two, so there's still a chance for them to get back into this. a site controlled, though. But Pure doesn't go for the plant. Fox Rocks will actually just push Axis spawn. This may catch Procal way off guard, and you can see it does. They were waiting for them to just take the site and plant, but Fox pushes well through. Which is Tom in the side and Spurks will go ahead and finish the job here in the middle and collect another scope card. So 5-1 for Pure 1. A dominant performance, but to be fair, this was kind of expected. Yeah, absolutely. Pure being a favor coming into this game from the start. And they're really starting to prove it. 5-1. They're taking A control pretty consistently. Um, we saw a few rounds in a row. They are peaking the... Um, they're reading the, the defense very well. With the shotgun in close left on uh, A long, where the plane is. And he was uh, pre fired. And the pre firing the right angles at the right times. We do have the sniper there now, so that could change things up a little bit. Yeah, it's the one card they have on Plasma. Everyone else is running default right now. Lex able to spot out Drisky over towards long B. Gets that kill, gets that instant advantage for Pier 1. Fox Rock again pushing this A barn. Blade, though, from inside, laying prone, able to stop them from controlling this area of the map. But in the meantime, Grego and Lex have just pushed through Big Barn. They've completely sliced through the B side of the map. And now Procal's in a lot of trouble. They have a couple of members left, sure, but Pure controls this side of the map. They could easily just maybe plant at B, but I don't know if they have the bomb. That could be the real problem. Might just be going for frags, and you can see JC, Sonny, and Lex popping off. It's now just Red City. Playing inside the A barn, getting pinched in from basically every angle. He is stuck in here. Greg will spam him through the wall with the Thompson. It's not a good look for this guy. He is absolutely trapped. He does get one kill on JC Sunny pushing, but Grego gets to spam through the wall to finish the job. And it is now 6 1. Just five rounds left to play in this half, and already a big lead from the Pure One side. As we continue on here in the first half, we're again going to see Pure working pretty quickly up the A streets and through a middle as they've done quite often. They've done a good job of being able to control this A barn and connector house on a fairly regular basis. Again, Pro Caliber's economy is in the toilet. Relying on a lot of default class. like pure is staging up for an a execute here soon it is even numbers at this point right now lex just trying to make sure his team is not getting flanked so they'll use grego and they'll kind of pair up together make sure that they can trade off of each other make sure that no one goes down for free and they're actually going to pivot they're actually putting a lot more focus towards the b side of the map at this point they probably realize they've created so much pressure on A that they should have forced some type of rotations, and they are correct. There is no one at B. Drisky is now trying to make his way back. So is Blade. But because Fox Rocks and Spurks have pushed alt middle towards Big Barn, they could get cut off from rotating to B. Or it might just be the fact that Lex pushes all the way through to the Axis side of the B site that he can just cut these guys off before they can actually try to go for the retake. 
In fact, we'll just continue to hold the angle here with the scope for anyone else who decides that they might want to... Oh, this guy could do a little bit of a jump peek onto Lex. That could be a problem. Lex is actually backing off. Gets caught by Blade. That's a good angle from Blade. Gets him a kill. Looking for a second. Gets it onto Grego. Not bad. Pro Caliber could very well make this retake work. They're now up a man and pressing their way in. The big problem is Fox Rocks is flanking behind them, and that's going to be the big problem And Spurks holds firm on the stairs. It's just one man left. It's Blade. He's already gotten a few kills in this round. He's been pretty good, but now he has to defuse. He's going to stick it. Fox Rocks must sprint, but Fox Rocks isn't going for it. He thinks it was a fake defuse, and it wasn't. Pros don't fake. Blade gets uh, to defuse, and that's another round to Pro Cal. The ability to jump when defusing the bomb caught him off there. It's a pretty underused ability i think but especially he knew where he was i suppose generally if you're uh if you're diffusing you want to hide behind that box so if they do come from the opposite angle they're not going to be able to get the shot onto you but he knew he was behind the wall so he had the safety to jump there for at least a few seconds um fox obviously just he hearing that uh hearing the steps from the jump uh, tricked him a little bit yeah i think you really nailed it I think that's very true. I don't think I do see a lot of players jump up and down while they're diffusing, but certainly it can make it sound like you're running. It can sound like footsteps. And so that would have made him think that, oh, he's off of it. He's running around, you know, looking for me inside the site somewhere. Uh, pulled out the clutch. I'm kind of wondering if that's going to stick around. I don't know if that's even intended that you should be able to jump up and down while you diffuse. It seems a little crazy. I know the, the CS equivalent is dropping a gun while you're diffusing. To or make it sound scoping like in with the something. up. Yeah, um, so I don't know. We'll have to see. I would like to get some players' opinions on that because, to be honest, I haven't seen it done very often, but I noticed it in yesterday's European Cup as well that a couple of guys did it and caught some people off guard with it, and now we've seen it in this game. So I'm the, curious what opinions are on that. The major problem as well is uh, as you are able to run, jump, and consistently do that to move around, uh, it's very hard to tell if you are actually sticking the bomb or if you are jumping around the site looking for that yeah. player. So it's uh, it's something you have to rely on the surround sound in your headset to figure out, which is yeah. less than ideal. I, I don't think I like it. I mean, I can understand, like, in CS, you can drop a gun at any point in time, right? And yeah. so at that point, it's not that OP because you're, because you're not making a footstep noise. So it's, yeah. it's definitely ambiguous what's happening if you just drop your gun. But if you make a footstep noise, then you that should be perfect information. And unfortunately, right now, if you can jump and defuse, it's not. It's yeah. bad information. So there's no way to know. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, Either way, that's we're the actually big problem. to a 2v2 situation here with the bomb down in the A site. Trying to go for the defuse, but Lex steps out with the scope, does get one kill. And we do see Grego getting in there, stopping that defuse from taking place. Not again, not this time, says Grego. So it is now 7-2 with three rounds left to play in the first half. I saw some people say in chat it's a glitch, and then someone said it's not a glitch. So, yeah, that, that's the confusing part. I'm not sure. I'm actually going to maybe ask the devs about that. But again, I'd, I'd love chat to kind of just express your opinion, because that is definitely kind of a under-discussed topic in this game, I think. Yeah, definitely. Especially because it's, it is so underused. The, the only advantage you do get is that you have to be exposed, and what a kill from Blade! Yeah, really well done. It seemed like that ninja diffuse situations kind of kicked the morale up a little bit that last round was very close to two on two it did still go the way of the allies and pure one but now pro cal themselves in another 3v3 situation so again a very uh, winnable situation for them lex has already pushed all the way through b i think though and knows it's clear that means sparks can rotate over and he, if he has the bomb he could just get a free plant Thanks to Lex's maneuvers. And Lex has even now caught a kill on the Tom with the scope. And so that's going to get the man advantage back for Pure. And again, Spurks can just plant for free, knowing that B is clear. These ProCal members are way far away to try to retake this. So this is uh, a great round from Pure 1. It got to be allowed to credit the Lex. Lex has been so good with the scope, dude. He's got an opening picks almost every single round he's been very sneaky you've seen him kind of push through b a couple of times push the raw mid a few times kind of catch people off guard get some big kills make it really hard for pro cow to rotate or get information on what's happening on the map he's gotten 16 kills in the nine rounds we've played so almost good for two kills around every round so that is exactly what you want out of your scope player and Definitely. lex probably is the best scope in na i would imagine i think like turns 
Wilski, Wicked. Some of these other guys are pretty good scopes, but Lex, I think, is probably a little bit ahead right now. Well, it definitely I'd love to seems see Lex go way. up against some EU scopes. I'd love to see like a Lex v Socklin or like a Lex v Replin or a... something get... like that. We gotta get them to fly over for the Insomnia land. Indeed, or some future international event, something. Love to see. Would love to see early on how in like an N18 like Pure One stack up against like a Albino Cats or an Article 51 or something like that, or a Penta. Like they're the only teams that really seem to have a set five, by the way, Albino Cats and Penta. Like other teams have been playing with different fives every Blitzkrieg battle, it seems. Even the Bang has been the finals every time, and even one one, always had a different, different five and. The leader and Zuma play with like a whole different team, <laughs> like three other players, like Aerox and a couple other guys last week or yesterday. So H hard to know about the European teams right now because it seems like their rosters are in flux. Pure One, on the other hand, is like an example of one of the NA teams that have had a set five for a pretty long time. Um, I think Janitors have had a pretty set five for a while, I want to say. And I know that the bulk of the Stay Pure team have played together for a while. I think the only roster change they've made recently was Dizzy coming in for Doggo. But the other four have been together pretty much since Alpha. So, yeah, same. I was trying to fill the fill the air while we reconnected to the server. Again, this is a known bug that happens for Specs every single game. But a fix is on the way. Do have some people sounding off in chat about the jumping thing. You just hit the X key. Yeah, you just gotta. You got, it puts you on a team at first. You have to manually join spectator again. Yeah, we're back in again. Oh my UI actually works. Does it work for you? Nope. Oh, I'm not so fortunate. I got the luck of the draw there apparently. So we are into the last round of the first half again. Sorry, we were crashed. We had to get back in. But it appears that Pure have taken the B-bomb site and have a four on three post plant. So probably feeling pretty good about this. Probably feeling pretty good about that double digits. Blade has evened it up with the pick of his own here, trying to flank through the B-house. But now Pure is popping off. A plasma all alone here, and he is getting shredded right now. Down the nine HP, and Grego will finish the job that Spurk started. And so the first half will heavily favor Pure One. Now up 10 to 2 here on Manor House P2. Lead, this is the, what, round of 16? So we're about, we, we, quarterfinals next game. Winner of this moves on to play We Could Be Pro. Which I think is some of the guys from Janitors playing on that team, like Shotties and stuff like that. So that could be an interesting game. That's one hell of a... A gap coming into the second half, eight rounds yeah. leading to pure, this is a pure one, rather. Yeah, again, this pure one team has almost won everything in NA. Like I said, they did lose to ITS a couple of times in one of the fast frag tournaments, I think it was, and took top four in that tournament instead, but have won several other tournaments. I had the pleasure of scrimming with them a couple of times, a great bunch of guys. Ranked for them in a couple of scrims. Actually held my own, I will say. <laughs> so show me a little damn respect. I can play this game a little bit. So if anybody's uh, looking for one for next week's no, Blitzkrieg? No, no, no. I'm focused on the commentating. Don't. Let's not, let's not get crazy. But I can hang. Let's put it that way. They will vouch for me. Either way, we are live into the first round. The second half already into a three-on-three -three as we see ProCal trying to batter down the walls here of the A-bomb site, but a nice nade from Box Rocks will silence them and stop them from being able to get the bomb plant for now. Red City did get the trade back, though, so it keeps it even. Grego with the car 98 coming around the gate. Will not be baited by that fake plant. He's just holding now. He'll slowly peek out. Might get pushed here, but he stays alive. Jumps out. Misses another shot. Oh, no, Grego. Not uh, what you want to see. It's now all on Fox Fox, who has that sick MP40 skin. Please let me has. He's going to be coming around the A barn to the broken wall, looking to see if he can clutch it up 1v2. Red City, prone on the ground. Easy pickup for Fox Rocks. He spots the other player as well towards the gate. He's got time. He's going to go ahead and get on the defuse. Is he going to stick it? 
He's sticking it. Blade, you gotta make a move. You gotta make a move. He's gonna stick this Diffuse Blade, jumps in with the tops and can't oh, get there fast no. enough. The Diffuse goes down. It wasn't planted for him. That's the big problem. You know, like sometimes you get a little bit absent minded. You think you're making a good play by pushing a position that could be very powerful for you post plant. But when the bomb's not planted for you and you're not sure if he's sticking it or not, you know, that you got to play those mind games. Then once you do decide to go for it, you got to you got to trust on spamming the site to get the kill. You don't get to get the exposed shot. So it comes back to haunt him. Really was a 50 50 play, though. I can't really criticize him too much for it. He's, uh, you know, 50% of the time he made the right play there. He could have peeked out and found a a player staring right at him as he jumped through that doorway. But unfortunately for him, it was the stick. And that's a one-for-one a one trade anyways on the sticks. The bomb defusals. No jump bug used there, though. It's just uh, Pier 1. The dominance continues up 12-2. One round away from moving on to the quarterfinals. Well, they will meet We Could Be Pros, I think is their team name. You got a feel for ProCal here. They they had a good game last game. It was, it was a close one. But coming into this, you're going to be losing a lot of motivation with an eight-round gap moving into the second half. And especially when you lose the first two rounds of that half. It's going to be very difficult for them to pick up around here, if by nothing else, morale. But I think their cards are pretty low as well. Not too sure. And the first B execute of Manor House so far. Yeah, let's see if this is going to have a swift ending at this point. ProCal trying to push into this B site, but spurts with the MP40, lights up the scoreboard for a couple of frags. And now it just seems like everything begins to crumble. It's all on Drisky. 1v4. And that's it. Doesn't even get started. 13 to 2 in favor of Pure 1. As expected, they will be progressing through the brackets. Again, 